Got up at 3 o'clock in the morning last night because I had to go to the bathroom. Uh, and then when I went back to bed, I couldn't fall asleep, so I turned on the TV. Bad idea. Somehow all the television commercials uh, that you see throughout the day, you just skip over them, you don't pay any attention. But at 3 o'clock in the morning, these television commercials become very inviting. I, I just, I, everything looks attractive to me in these commercials. I want to buy everything. So this one commercial was for a chairlift. Apparently when you get uh, really old and you can't walk upstairs anymore, rather than move out of your house, you install a chairlift on your flight of stairs. It's a railing that connects to the side of the staircase, and it has this little seat that folds down, and you sit in the seat, and this chairlift brings you up the stairs automatically, sitting in a chair. And again, I don't need it, but at 3 o'clock in the morning, I thought, I'm really lazy. I should get one of these things. On the air everywhere, this is New England Broadcasting. Welcome to the Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight. Things can get a bit weird, if you like that sort of thing. They're coming over Tuesday to install it. Whatever. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whatever time it may be. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Oh, sit back for this one. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, whatever your liquid libation may be in the morning, and join us as we take a look at the world around us. As much as it's a pleasure to be with you, the pleasure is actually all yours. And now, here's your host, Ron Van Dam. Thank you, Julie. Well, welcome. Welcome. Uh, can I get you anything? <laughs> can I get you a cocktail? Yeah. Well, I, I, how do I do that? H how do I logistically do something like that? I was just kidding. You're serious, aren't you? Oh, man. These allergies are driving me nuts. Let's go. I've never had allergies like this before. What's happened to the planet? Is it climate change? It's, it's pollen change is what it is. Anyway, uh, that's my problem, not yours. So uh, how you doing? Want a finger sandwich? Here, right here. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, um, I think too much. Every once in a while, I think too much. That's stupid. Oh, I always think too much. Uh, I, 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 get, I get a little perturbed uh, sometimes because I think there's a lot of stuff that we do in our daily lives that will eventually uh, be very, very harmful, but we're not told this because the industries that produce these items are too strong and powerful. Ron, what are you talking about? I'll give you an example. I, it is so clear to me and, and so amazing to me that the U.S. government, you know, this, this government thing, they actually thought that cigarettes were a good thing. Uh, back in the, uh, the 40s and 50s, everybody smoked. If you didn't smoke, there was something socially inept about you. Oh, don't get me wrong, there's still something socially inept about you right now. But I'm talking back in the 40s and 50s. I wasn't around, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, apparently the government handed out cigarettes to U.S. soldiers across the world, uh, thinking that the cigarettes uh, make you sharper and at the same time give you energy and can calm you down. That was their thought process. And they handed out packs of cigarettes to the armed forces. Um, it, when you think about that, it's like totally amazing. Because the U.S. government eventually 
uh, put restrictions on cigarettes and told you that smoking was bad for you, can cause throat ca- cancer, lung cancer, you name the cancer, it'll, it'll cause it. But our own government did the opposite. And that started to concern me. How, how could you not know that back then to the point where you were handing out cigarettes to your own population on purpose? The government did this. Maybe a few more days of studying cigarettes might have stopped this action, but apparently not. And now, of course, very few people smoke, at least admit it, or at least publicly. Because we know the harmful effects of it without question. So it starts me thinking, what harmful effects are we not talking about that are somewhat quite obvious? I've talked about them before on this program, and damn it, I'll do it again. I believe that cell phone use will someday kill you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And here's the funny part. I think you know that. But you love your cell phone so much that you kind of just overlook it. I'm serious. We take these little computer devices that are constantly being bombarded with data through the air wirelessly to this device that you carry on your person near your organs. Now, women not so much, because women carry their cell phones in their pocketbooks for the most part. Pocketbook is not connected to your body. So that's a little bit different. For a man, they wear these devices in their pants, right next to their testicles and their penis. I... And don't forget, this device is constantly being bombarded by these wireless rays or whatever they are that are hugging your body day and night. I remember when cell phones came out, women used to put their cell phones in their bra, tucked away in their bra. Um, Could there be a better formula for getting breast cancer really quickly? Most women have stopped that practice, not on purpose, just because, you know, they just have. And then we take these devices and we hold them up to the temples of our our brains. We hold them up to our heads. And we're on the phone and we're talking to people. Uh, I, I I just can't see how that couldn't be harmful. But nobody talks about this because that is a conspiracy that will surely get you in trouble. But I don't doubt that just like cigarettes, someday the government will say, we're sorry, we didn't know, but this stuff's slowly killing you. How could it not? How could it not? The only thing that will save you is texting, because you don't text up near your head. So that might save you somewhat. So text away. Except for you, Donald. <laughs> but everybody else should text. I think, I think this is like the biggest secret problem that we have. Because no one's going to stop using a cell phone. I think some people will say, well, if the cell phone kills me, then it kills me. But I'm not getting rid of my cell phone. I don't care what you say. That sounds stupid. But it's probably true. There are other things that we do on a daily basis that we don't think twice about. No, not at all. You know, a lot of people live near power lines. Yeah, power grids. You can see them in their backyard. How can this not be? And yet reports say, no, it's okay. Power lines are fine. They're not going to hurt you. Even though there's like zillions of kilowatts of power going through these things in your backyard. I mean... That's not going to really hurt you. Of course they say that. No one would live near these power lines. They have to sell houses, don't they? I know a lot of people that live near highways. They're either backed up to a highway with their backyards, or they're like half a mile away from a highway, and you can still hear the traffic going back and forth. 
Well, I can't smell the exhaust, so it's probably fine. No, it's not. No, it's not. That stuff is going to kill you. There was a study that was done. I don't know by whom or what the results were. Therefore, why am I talking about it? Because I heard about it. Well, Ron, that's fake news. All right, fine. Yeah, don't take it to be. I don't have statistics. I'm not quoting anybody. But I, uh, but I have been told that people that live in uh, rural areas where there's a barn or a cow, they live longer. The air is cleaner. Uh, there's, there's more of, of nature's natural process taking place with trees and things like that. If you live in the city or somewhat near a highway or a busy road, your life isn't as necessarily long. That makes sense. If you live in a big city, you're constantly breathing in exhaust fumes. You're used to it. I can't see how you're going to live to be 150 in that particular environment. It seems to me that all the stories I hear about these people who live to be well over 100, like 120, they live like in desolate areas near mountains and they're dressed up like Buddhas. They wear robes and stuff, not tight underpants. I mean, I just, this is just, I, I, it's not a fact. It's just something I'm observing. <laughs> I'm serious. I think they're going to find all this stuff out someday, and then they're going to tell you about it. And you'll be like, oh, how come you didn't say this before? This, is, this goes back to the story with, uh, you know, the government saying that a few glasses of wine a day is is good for you actually not only uh it's it's really good for you and then most people say oh if a few glasses is good a whole bottle must be fantastic <laughs> well i guess it doesn't work that way but it sounds like it would so i i just i i take everything with a grain of salt um i mean not literally i, I don't put salt in everything i'm just that's an expression Oh, God. God, I have to explain these things. My my doctor, um, when I, oh, I'd say like 15 years ago, my doctor told me to take uh, vitamin E every single day. Take it in the morning, take it at night. It's the miracle vitamin. It's, it's an antioxidant. It, it protects against everything, makes you healthier. Ron, take a vitamin E. You can get it over the counter in a, in a pharmacia. Uh, it's inexpensive. Do it, Ron. And I said, my God, what a wonderful doctor you are. If this is the miracle uh, over-the-counter uh, vitamin, then sure, I'm doing it, doctor. I said, yes, do it. So I did it for like years. A couple of years I took vitamin E every day thinking I will now live forever. I will be as healthy as possible. And I actually did feel like really good. I remember walking into his office one day, a couple of years later, and he says, Ron, how you doing? I said, I'm doing pretty good, actually. Of course, I was, you know, quite young then. Of course, you know, you're always doing well unless you contract some type of horrible disease. You always are feeling okay as a young adult. I go, Why not? Your body's young, so, you know, you're not, you don't have creaks going on. Your body isn't falling apart. Of course, you're feeling okay. So the doctor says to me, he says, Ron, um, I'm going to suggest that you stop taking the vitamin E. What? You, you told me, like, to take it twice a day. Yeah, uh, reports are coming out that the vitamin E uh, is uh, may not be, you know, great for you in large doses like that and probably doesn't really do anything anyway. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. So... Now we're finding out that I shouldn't be taking this. Uh, yeah, it's just not a, you know, probably not a good idea at this point, so why don't you just stop taking the vitamin E? Well, wait a minute now, wait a minute now. Let me just backtrack a little bit. You're telling me that something that I should do every day that'll be fantastic for me, you're telling me years later, it's not a good idea. So, well, you know, Ron, the information has just been published, and, uh, you know, we're so we're kind of saying back off on that, you know, for... You know, just kind of back off on the vitamin E, if you would, please, because the reports are, oh, my God. 
Well, thank you for telling me, doctor. Well, Ron, where are you going? I'm going to go buy a carton of cigarettes. Why? That'll kill you. (laughs) Well, you could change your mind tomorrow, so like, what the hell? So now everything I read, all these medical things and all these uh, interviews I do with these medical people, um, yeah, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Nobody seems to know anymore. We're more advanced with medical studies, yet we don't seem to know anything. And then I've said this before as well. Why can't you cure cancer? Which is, uh, cancer is basically uh, a general term for your cell structures going awry. Your cells just start, like, not being nice to each other, and you're growing some bad cells, and they overtake your body, as cells tend to do. Just like in life, there's good cells and there's bad cells. So um, I don't understand with all these people going to Harvard and all these big medical universities that out of all these people who can genetically structure a human being and clone and do all that kind of stuff, you can't come up with a cure for this cancer stuff. You can't come up with a medicine that counteracts it and then therefore gets rid of it? Well, we're working on it. Oh, well, why don't you work a little faster? Why don't you just, like, eat your lunch at your desk then? I mean, if if I were assigned to cure a disease that kills zillions of people, I'd probably work through lunch. But I don't know, yeah. I remember watching the the Jerry Lewis uh, muscular dystrophy telethon and all these children and adults would have muscular dystrophy and they'd parade them on the stage and it was to make us donate. And uh, Jerry Lewis would uh, raise uh, hundreds and millions of thousands of millions of dollars, $60 million, $70 million, that kind of thing. And then some... And uh, and Jerry Lewis at the end of the telethon would say, hopefully next year I won't have to be doing this. Um, they never came up with a cure. Uh, with all that money that they raised, they did have many advances in the field, but it was never conquered. And uh, there again, I wondered, like, what? I mean, I know we're we're raising money to make people's lives better who have this disease or this series of muscular diseases. But I I don't understand. Why can't you people just fix this stuff? Don't look at me. Don't look at me. I can't fix anything. I, I mean, if, if I can change a light bulb, that's like a celebration for me. You screw in the bulb and, and the light comes on again. To me, that's like, let's have a couple of glasses of wine because that's what I'm supposed to do on a daily basis. Let's celebrate that. Don't look at me to solve these problems. It's not my responsibility. But there are people that like can probably do this, and you guys really need to get to work. I mean, how can you go to bed at night? Like, this is my job is to cure this horrible disease. But I'm going to go to bed. No, stay up all night and figure this out. I don't think they want to stay up all night because if they do, they'll end up watching television commercials and they'll probably buy a stair lift as well. Or a chair lift, whatever you call that damn thing. All right, stop it. (sighs) I don't know, kids. I'm just, uh, I'm just floored by, by the human race. It doesn't seem to know what it's doing. Seriously, if this guy was any cooler, he would be pronounced dead. He's Ron Van Dam, and this is the Ron Van Dam Show.
do this show uh, every single freaking weekday. Uh, well over a thousand episodes are housed on the Podbean Network. If you want to listen to more than a thousand of these things, that's where you'll find them. We're, uh, our website is newenglandbroadcasting.com and newenglandtalkradio.com. And you'll also find us on Spotify and SoundCloud and iTunes and TuneIn Radio and on the Amazon Alexa app <laughs> and all kinds of things. We're on YouTube every single day as well. I don't know. There's like a lot of different places to find us. So if you're so inclined, there we are. <laughs> If you want to get in touch with me, it's kind of a stupid idea, but you can contact me at ronvandamshow at gmail.com. If you've written a book or you have something interesting to say, we can do an interview, perhaps. There are certain restrictions and qualifications. Or if you just want to uh, contact me and tell me how wonderful I am, it's ronvandamshow at gmail.com. You can also find us on Facebook, uh, which is New England Broadcasting Ron Van Dam Show. And I think we're just kind of going to leave it at that for now, even though there's more to say. I'm just getting tired of saying it. something else that uh, probably is killing us but we're not aware of it and that's uh, sitting about one foot to 18 inches away from a computer screen that's probably ruining our eyesight now this is probably true probably true right uh, for decades on the side besides doing television and radio stuff I was a wedding videographer which was a very nice job but one of my eyes, my right eye, was in the camera for hours upon hours, seven hours at a time. And as a result, about a couple of decades later, uh, my eyesight started to change in that eye. And the optometrist said to me two things. One is, uh, did you have an unusual uh, uh, great utilization of your right eye over your left? I said, yes, I did. I, it was in a camera all the time. And then the optometrist said, well, how much money do you have? Because I can make a lot of money off of you and doing some testing. I said, no, let's, let's stop with the money thing. And let's talk about the eye thing. I said, yeah. And he said, well, there are, there are occupational hazards to everything. There's carpal tunnel syndrome if you're on a keyboard all day or a typewriter back then. You know, these are occupational hazards. But we all have this thing about uh, staring at a computer screen for long periods of time or staring at uh, little computer screens or, or little cell phone uh, tiny screens straining to see uh, small little, little things. And uh, this is probably going to ruin your eyes. But do we think about it now? No. So we're going to talk about that uh, with our guest today. Uh, what's actually going on with your eyes? If you use this computer screen a lot, I mean, are you really jeopardizing your stuff? Well, we're going to uh, speak to this guest, but first, uh, I feel like a beer. When you reach for a beer, what are you looking for? The finest malts, grains, and hops. An artisan ale that represents a modern take on traditional brewing techniques that master brewers have refined and treasured for years. A true beer drinking experience. Or like most of us, are you just looking to get fucked up on the cheap? Well, if you're like the rest of us, congratulations, your beer is here. It's Falkenhalter. It's not a great beer. It's not even a good beer. 
It's a beer that's $4 a case and it's strong enough to melt the chrome off a trailer hitch. So kiss your liver goodbye and say hello to Falkenhalter. It's beer. Dr. Priya Gupta joins us now, an ophthalmologist, associate, uh, associate professor of ophthalmology at Duke University Eye Center in Durham, North Carolina. And Mari Takahashi, who is uh, also uh, a YouTube personality and gamer. And they join us now. We're talking about something that I'm very curious about because this is kind of new. Uh, one of them is cell phone use, how that's going to affect your brain someday. And the other is all the time we spend staring at screens, which is very different than staring at television sets through the years, I understand. But I'm, uh, what are, we don't know much about this because it's kind of new, isn't it? Absolutely, Ron. Um, so when we're staring at a screen, we're not blinking as often as we should. Uh -huh. And um, one of the issues that happens is that um, a lot of people experience eye fatigue, eye stress. Um, their eyes may even get burny, irritated, uh -huh. red. And we're really just learning about how screens are impacting our eyes. Yeah, it, it is a learning experience. It's different than what is it different than watching a television screen, you know, watching cable and that kind of thing? Is this a different kind of eye strain? Um, you know, either activity can cause eye strain, but um, there's something about having um, your device close to you yeah. that um, we find that the decreased blink rate is really what drives this eye stress. Yeah, what now what is the frequency of people actually staring at screens? I mean, I stare at a screen all day long, and I'm a doctor, Mari. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm a gamer, and although that's not a very um, orthodox uh, job, you know, I, I don't think that I'm alone in that, you know, when you wake up, you wake up to your emails, and you yeah. look at your social media, yeah. and you go to work, and you're looking at screens. And or you're the home. <laughs> That's right, yeah. You know, it's really uh, become a part of our lives, and I, and I don't think that it's uncommon that, um, a lot of us watch, you know, uh, movies when we get home and a lot of television either. Yeah, uh, no, it's not uncommon. Uh, it, it's a, it, it's, it's, it's a drug almost. I mean, you can't not do it. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm concerned because, I mean, with many things in our lives, you didn't know that it was bad for you until decades had passed. But now with this, we're kind of, uh, we're kind of up on this and we're kind of realizing this could be a problem. Absolutely. All right. So, and, yeah, go on. Oh, no, I was going to say, that's why we're here today, To um, We've partnered with iLove um, yeah. to get everybody to screen responsibly. What's actually happening with our eyes when we have too much screen time? Well, so we mentioned the um, decreased blink rate. And so what happens is that your tear film needs to spread across your eye for your eyes to be properly lubricated. So if you're not blinking properly, the tears aren't spreading properly, and that allows the surface of your eye to be stressed. And that can lead to something called dry eye disease. So dry eye can cause patients to have burning, irritated, red, um, and even blurred vision. That's actually a very common complaint, and people don't tie that to um, that excess screen use and dry eye symptoms. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I will uh, rub my eyes like they're itchy or something, like I'm giving them relief. It's kind of like yawning, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, does that mean that, yeah, I'm, I'm overdoing it? Probably so. Um, I think that, you know, the only way to really know is to um, seek out the care of an eye care provider. And I think that anybody that's having some of these symptoms should um, go and get checked. Um, as part of the I Love initiative, uh, Shire did a survey where they surveyed a 1,000 eye care providers. So these are ophthalmologists and optometrists. And when we look at what are our doctors seeing today, and three out of four eye care providers said that they were diagnosing more patients with dry eye today than they were five years ago, and that the vast majority of them felt like these patients that were coming in are younger, um, and that most of this was uh, highly related to screen use. You know, like in the, in the case of uh, Atomic Mari, uh, your day is like totally on a screen, I guess. Absolutely. Um, you know, and the best thing about caring for your eyes is that you really don't have to make too big of an adjustment. You know, I mean, it's not these, like, uh, life-changing, life-altering things that you have to do. We're not 
saying that you have to stop looking at your screens because, believe me, it is my line of work, and I absolutely love looking at my phone all day and all these things. Um, there's really, you know, small tips and tricks uh, that you can use to adjust your eyes and uh, help out with your eye health. Uh, personally, I keep my night light on on my screens um, at, for, for most of the day, mm -hmm. and uh, I try to do things that are analog. You know, I keep a journal, and I write in that as opposed to staying digital, yeah. um, and, and, I, and I find ways to get off the screen. Well, that's a lot. Another thing, that's, yeah. another thing that can be helpful is um, I always tell my patients about the 20-20-20 rule. So for every 20 minutes that you're on a screen, and for some of us, we might have to set a timer because 20 minutes goes fast when mm -hmm. you're on a screen, mm -hmm. um, you should take a 20-second break and look 20 feet away. And so you asked earlier about, you know, what's different about our computer screens versus um, watching TV. And so the thought is when we look far away, we're not, we're not as concentrated. And so we're able mm -hmm. to more fully blink and ha restore that um, spreading of the tear film. So then, indeed, watching television, because nobody sits up on top of a screen and watches a television screen, you're usually about at least 10, 20 feet away, but computer screens, it's like right in your face. So I guess it is more of a concern. Yeah. We uh, still need studies to, uh, yeah. to prove that, but I certainly would use um, the 20-20-20 rule. All right. All right. So, all right, so those are some little tips and tricks. What if, uh, what if it becomes chronic? Uh, what does my ophthalmologist do? Well, the treatment for each patient is different, and so the first step is understanding that there might be a problem and then seeing your eye care provider so that mm -hmm. they can kind of make a customized tail tailored treatment for you. There are a lot of uh, dry eye uh, products on the market, but they're not, you know, I don't know if they work or if they're even good for you to put in your eyes sometimes over the counter. Yeah, and that's why it's so important to see an eye care provider because yeah. um, what works for one person might not be the best for someone else. See, that's what we do in our society these days because of that is we go to the, well, I don't think you can call them drugstores anymore. I think they're pharmacies. <laughs> and you, and you, you resolve your medical issue on, uh, on a shelf, and that sometimes scares me a little bit. Uh, it is a good idea to have it checked out and not to self-medicate yourself, I guess is the right word. Yeah, uh, a lot of times, you know, you still need a doctor to tell you what's going yeah, on. Yeah, 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 because it may be something other than what you think it is. And Absolutely. I, I don't know what's inside those little boxes sometimes on the counter. I have no <laughs> idea. All right, so how can I find out more about this? Uh, because this is something everybody should be concerned about, whether they think they have symptoms or not. It's kind of good that you even brought this up so that we're aware of what we're doing with these screens. Absolutely. Um, as part of the I Love initiative, the ScreenResponsibly.com website is up and running, and I would encourage everybody to go to ScreenResponsibly.com. ScreenResponsibly.com. Okay. And, of course, to do that, you have to have a screen. <laughs> do you remember the days? Do you, I, I don't know how old the both of you are, but do you remember the days when you used to contact somebody by telephone <laughs> and, and ask what, questions? Absolutely. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what a telephone is anymore, I have to be honest with you. All right. Okay. ScreenResponsibly.com. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Take care. Lovely. Lovely people. You're lovely, too. You're really lovely. You are. You're not so bad. Uh, we're <laughs> we're going to say goodbye now. I'll be... I'll be, I'll be ah, never mind. I can't even talk. I wish you peace. Join me tomorrow, will you? Yeah? Promise?